against the world, how I'm feeling lately. Knowing that they doubt me is what motivates me. Screaming out the gun, don't let the devil take me. Unbreakable, sticks and stones couldn't break me. I've been stepped on and locked down. I done been lost and not found. I've been hit hard and knocked down. But I got back up in that 12th round. I guess we can begin at why I began writing poetry in the first place. It began as a form of therapy after a breakup where I was in a sad space. I had come to the realization that my first marriage had ended solely because of me, which is a very hard pill to swallow because it took a deep and very foreign understanding of, of accountability. I had no one to blame but myself, and I sunk into a six-month depression. Now, my mother hates when I use that term because she believes, as I do, that every bad instance in your journey, if used properly, is usually an unregrettable obtained lesson. Now, that may be true, but try telling that to someone when they are in the thick of an emotional and mental breakdown. That's like telling someone at the height of your anger to just calm down. Anyway, at the end of the six months of shutting off the world and being alone with my thoughts and sadness, I had a revelation. There is no one coming to save me from me, and I need to think of something quick to quit the procrastination. By happenstance, I had come across an ad for Blurb.com, where it was advertised that I could make my very own book. Well, golly gee, this seems a lot better than just sitting in the living room of my apartment watching Friends reruns and listening to the artist Pink cook. I proceeded to write Poetic Simplicity, Volume 1, Lessons in Optimistic Tunnel Vision. And when I wrote the final poem in that book, by God's grace, I was no longer my mental emotional prison. From this point, I took a seven-year hiatus from any meaningful relationship status. During this portion of my life, any time something confused me, I wrote it down in rhyme. I come from the cloth that no one really wants to hear your woes, so best you handle them yourself in your downtime. But writing was sporadic at best, because, well, I was out living my best life. And the last thing I wanted to entertain were any thoughts of another girlfriend, let alone a wife. Fast forward seven years later, and I finally got into another relationship. I wrote Poetic Simplicity Volume 2, Conflicted Resolution, during the first five years of that courtship. And once again, when I wrote the final poem in that book, I was finished with that fellowship. It took me close to another five years to exit stage left from that comic strip. Toward the last three months of ending that companionship, I began to think about legacy. My father, unfortunately died when I was a teenager and I didn't have leave much for his grandchildren in the form of legacy, respectfully. Post-vasectomy, I did not want my grandchildren walking the earth not knowing where their bloodline stemmed from. The idea of the unsharpened pencil was the outcome. But first, I asked the ex what she thought of the idea. A swift, well, where are you going to get to say the poetry? No one would want to listen to you. You mumble. And when you speak, you have a tendency to stutter and stumble. Ah, the gift that always kept on giving. Is it no wonder I forced her to find another place to continue living? Oh, well, upward and onward. And as my audience already knows, I immediately restructured. Once that was over with, I went on with the assumption that if I could make 100 episodes of The Unsharpened Pencil, speak my truth about things men tend to keep confidential, what it's like to be vulnerable, being disappointed when dating someone with potential, what in life is universally always going to be essential, then maybe I can leave a Lorenzo legacy for them to reference when I am no longer here. Something to aid them in life when they are bombarded with fear. That grandpa was not the best father, son, nor friend. But that he fought to the very end. To attempt to learn from his mistakes, be accountable, and make amends. How to face adversity with your head held high. How to own your shortcomings void of blame and simply retry. Whether it is Jay's, Heaven's, Maya's, or John John's child, grandpa would have loved to be there for a longer while. The unsharpened pencil was never created to be a career. It was a form of therapy that I chose to engineer, to simply leave you with something that was crystal clear. Because trust me, I loved you before you even arrived here. Still standing, still swinging, still fighting. Rose from the concrete, I'm still shining. Never been a quitter, still trying. Say you gotta love and for surviving.